Hey guys, it's Edward. So, we have another edition of Welcome to the Coding Interview, You Suck. In my last video, I talked about why you need to get good at the coding interview. Today, I'm going to get into the reasons why everything sucks about the coding interview. Including you, yes. You who failed the Google on-site three times. You who didn't even make it past the phone screen. And yes, you who is currently sitting very, very comfortably at a senior engineer job at Facebook. This video applies to everyone who has ever failed a coding interview, including me. What most people get wrong about the coding interview is that they treat this like a college exam. They think it's just a standard pencil and paper exam, and as long as you know the formula or memorize your definitions and facts, then it will be simple. On some level, this is true. You do need to have some fundamental understanding of the definitions of the components you're working with. But for the most part, this is not actually how you succeed in the interview. The point I'm trying to make here is that people aren't treating the coding interview like a craft or a game of skill. Rather, they are treating this like an exam that they can take multiple times and only need to pass once. And that leads to a lot of inconsistent results. So if you guys learn anything from this video or you just like it, just tap that like button for the YouTube algorithm and turn it blue for me. These videos take a lot of time to make and it helps me out. Plus, it lets me know if you like these videos. So with that, welcome to the coding interview. You suck. Overall, there are a lot of factors and reasons why the coding interview sucks, from the interview itself to the prep material, and this can be taken as a metaphor for everything you do in software engineering. It's never going to be perfect as you want it or need it to be, but you make do, learn to understand it, learn to master it, then improve upon it. Why? Because chances are the existing structures you're working with that are a pain in the ass to deal with have been tested by a lot of other engineers who are way smarter than you. And unless you're a god who can snap your fingers and create a whole new system instead of Thanosing the entire thing, then you're pretty much going to have to accept that limitation of reality. Because at the end of the day, there's always someone better than you, relatively speaking. And relative to that person, you suck. Heck, I think I suck too. I can tell you 10 to 15 other people who are vastly more skilled than me at not just software engineering, but also at life, communication, and just about everything else. I'm just some random dude creating YouTube videos. I don't know why you're listening to me, man. I suck. And the only reason I'm here talking to you today is because I looked at the people better than me, asked them what they were doing differently, and just copied all the things that worked. Ding, ding, ding. Eh? Eh? You see where I'm going with this? Hint, hint. Maybe you should do it for your coding interview. But enough chit chat. Let's rant about why the coding interview sucks to begin with. Let's start off with this tweet by Max Howell, inventor of Homebrew. 90% of our engineers use the software you wrote, Homebrew, but you can't invert a binary tree on a whiteboard, so f off. Now, for those who don't know, Homebrew is a package installer used by 99% of developers out there with a MacBook. You know what's worse than an interview that doesn't actually test your ability as a software engineer? That a good chunk of these problems you will face in your interview actually have nothing to do with your ability to apply the data structures and algorithms themselves. Instead, it's testing your ability to come up with an algorithm and to parse the problem correctly. But that parsing in and of itself can be a massive derailment. Imagine I gave you a power problem, but you couldn't remember some of the power rules, like this one, which are actually the key insights to solving the problem. Imagine how stupid it would be for me to say, because you didn't know this rule, you don't know how to code. You suck at coding. Rejection. And yet, that's what a significant number of these problems essentially boil down to. Don't get me wrong, that's not every problem in the world, and some of these algorithms are actually quite useful, although you might not encounter them in everyday coding. But if you walk into a coding interview without knowing a particular pattern or algorithm, you could be royally screwed. So let's take a very simple example. Maximum sum of subarray of size k. The naive solution is to iterate through every index starting from index to index k and sum up everything. The optimal solution is to use a sliding window of size k. Wait, sliding window? Huh? What college textbook ever talked about a sliding window? And even if you didn't know it, the insight you needed to drive on the spot is to reuse a portion of the previous sum. In hindsight, that's pretty freaking obvious. But how the hell were you supposed to know to look there? Again, sliding windows are extremely useful and are the basis for rolling hashes. It's how text matching is done. But you would be hard pressed to find this algorithm in cracking the coding interview, despite its ubiquity. 
That's why I think array-based problems are the hardest problems by far. There are way too many ways of manipulating an array or traversing it, and so you have many different ways of actually approaching the problem. In a sense, you kind of get overloaded by all the possibilities. But you know what the good news is? The less the interview tests your ability as a software engineer, and the less that it is tied to the experience you have, the easier it is to fake being qualified. If you're going to complain about how bad the interview is, you fundamentally need to accept this fact. If you truly believe that the interview does not do a good job at testing who you are as an engineer, then it must be testing some other skill set. Therefore, getting good at that irrelevant skill set will make the interview yield a false positive. So, in short, You're such a crappy engineer. How did you get such a high offer from Facebook? I tested well. Second, I like to address why most interview prep material sucks. They do contain good information, but it's little more than just your standard data structure and algorithm textbook. And yet, you see people charging $500 to $2,000 just to have access to this information. They just talk about basic computer science topics, walk you through some problems, and let you run off on your own. So what's the issue I have with them? Dude, not only are there college textbooks on this topic, there are several YouTube channels and free online resources. You're overpricing free. What the hell? The material itself does not do a good job at teaching people how to master the coding interview. They're basically a glorified text bank and a simplified college textbook. At best, they are problems designed for a novice who are getting their feet wet with interview practice. But the worst are these gurus who get a single FANG internship, then proceed to get nowhere with their careers. They don't ever land another FANG job out of college or have an extremely low success rate at interviews. They never get promoted or improve. They just say to study topics, practice problems, watch the video, go spam leak code. And if that fails, it was just a bad day and you need to study more. I don't accept that. I'm of the opinion that anything that has value can produce consistent results. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to make sure that you can consistently get offers. And I don't believe luck should ever be a significant factor. Now, I'm not saying every guru is a fraud, nor am I saying only senior engineers are capable of writing a guide on how to pass these interviews. After all, if they got a fang job, they're doing something right. But I guarantee you, a terrible guide written by a competent individual is 100 times better than a well-written guide from someone who only got one internship or one job offer. More often than not, the senior engineer will make a better guide than someone who only passed a FANG interview once. Just make sure that the guy you are listening to can consistently land job offers. And finally, the hard part. We get to you. Yes, you, the viewer. And I guess everybody else out there, including me. Huh. This is why you suck. You can blame the nature of the interview. You can blame the interview prep material. But that really doesn't help. Even if the interview is a load of everyone is playing the game and there are people out there who can consistently score well. If a bunch of people can get through these coding interviews and the results tend to be highly correlated with their abilities as an engineer, the interview process must be doing something right. Google uses it to hire some pretty goddamn good engineers and so does Facebook. And therefore, there must exist some set of characteristics that should allow you to pass as well. If you're not showing these characteristics, you simply don't deserve to be hired. There's no other way around it. So what I'm saying is, this system works, whether you like it or not. And I know a lot of you do mock interviews as practice, but truthfully, neither of you are qualified. This quote by the guy who crystallized the Dunning-Kruger effect basically explains why I think it's pointless to review your own efforts or have your friend of similar skill give you interview feedback. The incompetent cannot know that they are incompetent. The skill you need to produce a right answer are exactly the skills you need to recognize what a right answer is. So basically, if you're going to critique yourself and find the right answer, you wouldn't have made that mistake to begin with. Neither you nor him have the insight or skill to actually self-criticize properly or know what to improve on. It is also for that reason an incompetent individual who cannot consistently get results is not qualified to give tips or write a technical interview prep course. They don't know what actually works because they've only done it once. At best, you're just going to be guessing and testing approaches until you find a hit. There are better ways of improving and it starts by learning from people or resources better than you. By learning from people who consistently get results. And this leads me to the first reason why you suck. You're inconsistent. Humans are creatures of habit. What you do in one interview, you will do in another interview. If you are approaching the interview consistently and properly, 
you should consistently receive offers. However, if you are spotty and all over the place and your approach changes day by day or company by company, that all changes as well. If you breeze through the on-site for one company, then fail the phone screen for another, then you're probably doing something wrong. The only way to overcome this is with habitual practice such that your approach to one interview will work for all interviews. If you want consistent results, you need to have a consistent approach. To do this, you don't have to reinvent strategies that have already been invented or grow it from the ground up. Instead, you should copy the consistent approaches, practices, and habits that lead to success. If you want to always get the right answer, you should copy a systematic approach that gets the right answer. That way, you can replicate this approach no matter what the problem is. It is also for this reason that I honestly think the whole I got my FANG internship after doing 100 codes of lead code is pretty BS. Put that guy through another set of interviews from the same company and he'd probably fail. The same guy advertising this is the same guy who gets accepted by Facebook but rejected by Google. That makes no sense. If you're good enough for one company but not good enough for another company of equal or similar standards, then something is really, really wrong. There is an ocean of difference between doing 20 interviews and getting only one offer versus doing 20 interviews and getting 20 offers. It's the same as some guy who can hit the bullseye 20 times in a row versus some guy who can hit a bullseye one time out of 20. One guy's going to the Olympics. Who do you trust to teach you to get better? You want to be the guy who is acing every interview. That way, you aren't ramming your head against the wall wondering why you didn't get an offer. So the second reason why you suck is that you're practicing inconsistently. Deliberate and consistent practice is how anyone becomes good at anything. You don't luck into being good. Without focusing on why you did not solve the problem and without an external influence that is more competent than you are guiding you, whether that is the answer key or someone else, you're just gonna end up memorizing problems and answers with no ability to actually evaluate problems. This is something I see so many times in my coaching sessions. The candidate gets thrown into an unknown situation and he tries every memorized pattern and solution. When that doesn't work, he gives up and stalls. This is very bad and also a sign of doing lead code questions improperly. If you are just spamming the lead code system with code submissions without deliberate and complete thought in each submission, you need to stop. Take a step back, reevaluate your design, and then debug the solution. Focus on actually answering the problem instead of just getting answers. And then there's that set of people who just practice random problems. If you just keep grinding problems randomly, you will lack depth and understanding. Shifting your focus from learning trees to graphs, back to trees to dynamic programming is a really good way to waste your time. You're gonna miss out on all the nuances of a particular data structure or algorithm. The reason is that you'll spend more time trying to remember these topics instead of diving deep into these topics and figuring out multiple ways of parsing it. Focusing only on a single topic for a good amount of time will make you an expert in a shorter amount of time rather than spreading your focus and jumping from discipline to discipline. And finally, the third reason why you suck is that you are not fast enough. Maybe you actually do understand everything. Maybe you do understand how hash maps work. Maybe you can recite time space complexity off the top of your head. Maybe you actually know how to apply it in a meaningful way. So you're on the right path, just do it faster. When it comes to an actual problem and you're constantly spitballing random things to try and get a solution, you're probably in the large majority of interviewees who don't know what they're doing and are just trying random stuff. They don't know how to apply that jumble of knowledge in their head to anything meaningful. All the knowledge in the world is absolutely pointless if you can't do anything with it. The application of data structures and algorithms should be autonomous and second nature. Similar to how you can talk without thinking of the words coming out of your mouth, you should be able to apply your knowledge in the exact same way, even when you talk about your past projects. There's a very good post on Lead Code that explains this concept of levels of proficiency and is a very good write-up of a candidate's path to an L5 offer at Google. To quote the post, the levels of proficiency are as follows. One, cognitive, focused thought is required to perform a task. Second level, associative, improved accuracy and efficiency, much less concentration required to perform a task. Third level, autonomous, perform a task automatically with barely any conscious effort at all with optimal accuracy and efficiency. And you want to be at the autonomous stage of proficiency when it comes to the whiteboard. But Chances are, you're somewhere between cognitive and associative. The goal is to get to a point where you can look at a problem and almost immediately have two to three different ways of solving it. And hopefully one of those ways is the optimal solution. Or you at least have an idea or roadmap on how to get the optimal solution. The actions and evaluations you take should be autonomous and does not require a significant amount of thinking. So overall, there are a lot of factors and reasons 
why the coding interview sucks from the interview to the prep material to the candidate and I know I've been pretty negative this entire video, but my goal with this is really just to tear down your misconceptions of what the coding interview entails. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's to always be consistent in every aspect of the interview. Again, this is not just a disposable college exam. This is your life, your livelihood, your future, your career, and you should be taking this way more seriously than you think you are. And you might think spending thousands of hours on leak code is the best way to get there, but ultimately, that's really improper practice, unless it's focused, deliberate, and going somewhere. So, in the next video, we will talk about what it means to get good, the standard for it, and how to actually get there. So, stick around. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.